In this week's video, I'm going to show you the absolute must-bring items on your next trip to Alaska to ensure that you have a fun and successful time. Because there aren't many vacations where you will see sun, rain, snow, mountains, oceans, glaciers, and those weather conditions and landscape hurdles alone absolutely mandate proper planning so you can have an amazing adventure. Now I'm going to get into the bags that we use and what we put in them in just a second. But planning for this trip begins at home and the airport. This is a security I'm going to talk about two items that is going to make your travel experience a little bit easier when you're at the airport and on the road in Alaska. If you're traveling with kids, you know that some of them are going to be on their switches, perhaps their phones or their iPads. You're going to be on your phones and all of a sudden everybody's battery is going to die all at once. Now you're in the middle, if you're like us, of a seven hour flight and it would become increasingly boring and probably frustrating. So that's why I say a battery bank is key for a trip like this. I bought this anchor battery pack just for the flights, but I also didn't realize how much we would use it while we were on the trip. I was continually charging my cameras, the family's phones, the iPads as we were traveling from city to city. Plus, you really didn't know when you were staying at an Airbnb or a yurt what their outlet or charging situation was going to be. So having this battery pack really came in handy. This one in particular has two USB ports and a USB-C. A word of caution though, if you have more demanding electronics like a Nintendo Switch or a laptop computer, some of these battery banks aren't going to be strong enough. So I did a lot of research to make sure that the one that I purchased was going to be strong enough to do my MacBook Pro, my kids' Switches, our iPad and everything and this one routinely got great reviews. The next packing tip I have for everybody is for all the OCD travelers out there. These are packing cubes. My wife found these a few years ago and at first I didn't really see how beneficial they were going to be. But as per usual she was right and these turned out to be amazing. What happens is everybody gets their own personal packing cube. It's nice because they're color coded. Someone can have blue, someone can have white, someone can have black. Basically it's their own miniature suitcase inside the big suitcase. So when they all go in, you know exactly where your clothes are going to be. After the end of a long day of traveling, when you get to your hotel or Airbnb and you don't want to have to think about whose clothes are where and what socks are whose, if you use these packing cubes, you can just open up your luggage. Everybody can pull out their own particular cube. It does make things a lot nicer, packing cubes. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about, backpacks. Now, everybody in my family took a different backpack to Alaska, and that wasn't by design. It was really mainly because COVID and supply chain issues. There was not one backpack that everybody particularly liked. One person wanted orange, one person wanted blue, and because of that, we all just got different backpacks. For example, my son had an REI branded backpack. My daughter had an Osprey branded backpack. Both backpacks worked well. They all had similar features. The nice thing about the REI that the Osprey backpack didn't have is that the abdominal straps had small little zippered pockets in them that they could hold things. Did we use them? No, we really didn't, but they're there. Additionally, inside the REI backpack is a list of items that kind of remind you what you need to bring just in case you were going to walk out and not bring your banana. On the outside of both backpacks, you'll see we had two essentials. Don't forget your Nalgene bottle. The Nalgene bottle is pretty self-explanatory. On the other side of everybody's backpack, as much as it pains me to say this as a grown man, we all brought tushy cushions. Let me explain. So my family, we're not hikers. All of this was new to us. This was us looking at YouTube videos and these came highly recommended, mainly so you can sit down at the end of a hike or in the middle of the hike, rest. If it had just rained, you can put these on the ground and it keeps your bum kind of clean. Is it absolutely necessary? No. Does everybody want a clean bum when they're hiking? Yes. And did these help us? Yes. Consider the tushy cushion. Next up is the eye mask. Not a lot of nighttime in the land of the midnight sun. Now, generally speaking, we were there in late August and early September, so the sun did set and we did get a lot of night sky for several hours throughout the night. But if you're there in the summertime, don't forget an eye mask. Next thing I would recommend on a trip like this is actually a camera for your kids. My wife bought this pretty neat little creator cam for my son. She bought it off Amazon. The lens kind of flips up so they can do selfies or they can take pictures or video going forward actually came with a little miniature tripod that they can stand up on. My son really enjoyed walking around Denali, taking a lot of pictures and videos. I don't remember off the top of my head how much this was. Obviously, I'll put it in the link in the description so you can check it out. But this was well worth it because my son really enjoyed being able to take his own photos throughout his Alaskan adventure. Next up, binoculars. When you're at the zoo and aquariums and conservation centers, animals are pretty close by. 
But the reality is you might get very lucky when you're in Denali National Park or other areas and see an animal up close. Be careful if you do. But most of the time they're going to be far off on the mountaintop. You can see this mountain goat that we saw here was actually pretty far away. But the camera and the zoom lens I had make it seem like it's pretty close. But more commonly this is going to be your wildlife encounter. These goats incredibly far away. In fact if you're not really looking for them you could easily miss them because basically they look just like white dots on a hilltop. So the binoculars are of utmost importance. You can see here we have the bear grills binoculars but they're essentially bushnell binoculars but these obviously come in real handy when you're trying to see wildlife way up on the mountain next up waterproof cell phone cover now if you feel pretty confident that you're going up to alaska and you're just walking around you can probably skip this one but if you're doing any form of river adventure kayaking or just getting out on a boat in general my wife and i use these on our kayaking adventure wrap them around our neck when i saw a picture i wanted to take we could actually take the picture through the plastic i guess I guess this is plastic, but the peace of mind was well worth it. Cell phone cover. Now we're getting into some of the smaller things in the backpack. And I should mention, my wife bought these Kula cloths off Amazon. These come in handy, especially for the ladies who have to use the restroom outdoors. It's pretty self-explanatory. Every one of our backpacks had a small carabiner and several things attached to it. A flashlight, more sanitation wipes in case nature calls, earbuds in case you were staying somewhere at night and it was pretty loud in the environment. These can come in the most handy if you're staying in yurts and there's a few other yurts around because the insulation and, and noise levels at those places can be a little loud. And a whistle. <whistles> Fortunately, didn't have to use our whistles. And these aren't very loud. Hand warmers, obviously self-explanatory. If you go into the mountains, if you're hiking high up or go into the mountains or take an air taxi like we did and you realize your hands or feet weren't as insulated as you thought they were, Hand warmers are perfect. Another potentially crucial item that you might want to consider is portable toilet paper. They're actually really neat. They come out as small, almost kind of dehydrated towels. The instructions say add a few drops of water, peel it off, wipe your bum. Another thing we had in all of our backpacks was a bag full of snacks. It was a lot of various protein bars and honey waffles. My kids actually turned into pretty big fans of these pro meal bars on the go. So we actually find ourselves using these on a pretty regular basis around the house since we've returned. The next item is sunglasses. I didn't really think about these for my children. I brought my pair and my wife brought hers because we usually take sunglasses wherever we go. But I didn't think about them for the kids. Obviously they're nice to have just in general terms, but these were encouraged when we went into our trip into the mountains. The sunglasses were really nice. Because I forgot to bring these to my kids, we actually stopped in one of the convenience stores and bought these. Consider sunglasses. Another great item to bring is a flashlight or a headlamp. Having the headlamps were nice for two reasons. One, when you're staying at Airbnbs and even yurts, you don't know what the electricity situation is gonna be like. When you're at home and the power goes out, you know where your flashlights are, you know where your candles are, but here in those places, they might not even have them. So having the peace of mind of a flashlight or a headlamp was really nice. And one way that I did use this and I didn't anticipate, we arrived at a particular Airbnb after night. There were no lights on the outside of the house and we couldn't see anything. We had to bring all our luggage in from the car. So it was nice that I could just put this on my head Turn the light on. It was tighter at the time. And this is the headlamp from the Nightcore brand. Another thing that was nice about this is it didn't have batteries. It was all rechargeable. And should it have ever gone out because we used it too much, of course we had our battery bank that could recharge it without any problems. Other things to consider too is we did take a few naturalist guides that my wife had picked up off of Amazon as well. This one in particular was neat because you could learn about the animals that you're gonna see and the tracks that they leave behind. In fact, specifically, you can see here we actually spent quite a bit of time investigating this animal track that we found, only to realize it was probably the dog that was about half a mile in front of us. Nevertheless, this was fun for the kids to read and learn about and take with them as they look for other tracks around the park. And because I never knew how adventurous we were going to get when we got there, one thing, of course, that we bought was a compass, because it just seems like something you're supposed to bring. Did we use it? No, no we didn't. If you're gonna stay on the basic trails, those things are so well marked, wide, and paved. If you get lost on one of those things, the compass isn't gonna be the thing that saves you. The next thing we need to talk about, and it wasn't necessarily in our backpacks per se, but we always had it with us, is proper clothing. Do not go to Alaska with jeans and some sneakers on. It's going to ruin your trip. At some point, even if you're mildly adventurous, you're gonna end up kayaking or out on a river or out on the sea or perhaps on the mountain and encountering some snow, you have to have the proper attire. At the very least, you wanna go out with thermals and some real hiking pants. When we were in the city, of course, you can get by with jeans, but anytime you're hiking or doing anything adventurous, especially if you know the sun is going to go down, I get it, it's Alaska, it might not, but still, if you're there in the cooler times of the year, the temperature swings can be quite impressive. So base layer with thermals, and on the outside, a quality pair of hiking or utility pants are an absolute must. So you need the hiking pants and do not forget rain pants or rain jacket. 
have them close by at all times. You may walk out to a beautiful sunny day, but I promise you in a few hours, it very likely could be rainy. Or in the case of this shot right here, it's beautifully sunny on one side of the sky and a storm is approaching on the other side. You will get caught with some rain. And if you don't have the proper clothing, it's gonna ruin your day. So in everybody's backpack were rain pants, a rain jacket, and a rain hat. And generally speaking, I don't really like wearing wide brimmed hats like these because every time I put them on, I think I'm gonna look like Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones, but I just look like this. So a real quick lesson on the attire. Thermals, maybe even a couple of pairs because there were several times my son had two pairs of thermals on. Outside hiking pants, rain jackets, rain pants, and a rain hat. In addition to all the outerwear, we also had utility gloves. These were nice because they were kind of in between those big bulky ski gloves that can be kind of hard to put on, but they did provide some layer of warmth as well. These we bought at REI, and I know my kids, especially my son, use these way more than the big insulated ski gloves that we had brought just in case. So if I could sum it up, the most important things to bring would be proper clothing, including a rainproof hat, a battery bank, binoculars, a headlamp, a nice water bottle, waterproof, you know what? We used everything that we took on this video. So if I could recommend something, it would be bring everything that we brought on this video. But most importantly, do dress appropriately. Don't just take it from my YouTube video. I'm sure there's others out there. Be sure and check out the other video on how to do Alaska with kids. It basically talks about all the excursions that we did. My wife and I felt pretty confident we were going to have a good time. We knew the kids would probably have a good time as well. But in reality, it was a phenomenal time. It was a great trip. And if you ever get the chance to go, I highly recommend it. So with that being said, see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.